everybody, I'm Greg Matthews and I'm Elliot Cooper. And welcome to our channel, Greg and Elliot. What's up everybody, it's uh, Greg and Elliot and we are back with Getting to Know Us Part 2. We got, um, we got such a good response to Part 1 mm -hmm. and so many new questions that y'all wanted to know. We decided to do a Part 2 to answer some more questions and just, you know, talk and kick it a little bit more. Right. Um, no. We got I, some announcements. I do actually, I do. Um, first of all, Elliot, <laughs> Elliot is ready to kill me because yesterday we tried to film the Getting to Know Us Part 2 video. Not tried. We filmed. We filmed. We sat here for an hour and talked to the camera. And you know, after the first so after the first video, we got a lot of feedback, and part of the feedback was that the audio was terrible. Mm -hmm. So you know, we knew with this YouTube thing, we're getting to know. You know, we're just doing the best that we can. And so we said, okay, a couple people said the audio was terrible, so let's go out and get some new audio equipment. We bought a microphone, so I hope the audio is better this time around. If not, let us know and we will improve it for the next time. Mm -hmm. But we got a microphone, we got a whole setup. And we sat there, recorded for an hour, and when I went to look at the footage of us recording the Getting to Know Us Part 2, the microphone was not plugged all the way in to the camera, so we got zero audio and an hour's worth of footage of us sitting here talking. A lot of B-roll. <laughs> a lot of B-roll. So yeah, that was not the best, but you know, trial and error, it happens, right? Mm -hmm. Um... So yeah, we're gonna try this again. Getting to know us, part two, take two. Take two, part two. Um, here with our new setup, got our new audio. Mm -hmm. A couple other things, what else? Um, Y'all asked a lot of good questions, so we're gonna answer some of those, we're gonna get to those. Yeah. A lot of good comments, we really appreciate those. And I will say that, um, wow, like when we set out to do this, we did not expect when we decided to do this, we did it for fun, like a new way to connect. We wanted to start a YouTube channel. We didn't have any expectations. We were like, okay, maybe we'll end up with... I told Elliot, I was like, my goal is maybe we'll have like a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. Right. <laughs> we put that first video up and that video has over 60,000 views. And we have already over 4,300 subscribers the last time I checked. You can thank my thighs. Yeah, we got a lot of comments on Elliot's thighs. We got them covered up today. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank y'all. We really appreciate the love. Like we yes. were not expecting it, um, yes. and it means a lot. Hopefully, we can continue having fun. Like mm -hmm. we're not, you know, we got a lot of good content and a lot of fun stuff on the way. So thank you. Continue to tune in. Continue to leave comments, letting us know what you want to see. If you right. got questions, stuff like that. Thighs in, thighs out. Thighs in. <laughs> <laughs> Got to cover these things up. <laughs> um, what what else? else? Uh, oh, one more thing. Um, again, we appreciate all the love, but I will say, you know, there's been some people who have left nasty comments on our page, um, talking about how we're gonna go to hell, how it's disgusting to see two men together on camera. You know, all the stuff that you would imagine. The overwhelming comments have been positive, but like to the people who come across our channel and you don't like what we have going on, um, you can just keep scrolling. Like, you don't have to leave nasty comments. Nobody's making you watch us. You know, what we're doing is not for you. We started this channel to spread, you know, joy, love, and positivity. You know, have fun and really uplift people. So, like, if it's not doing that for you, you can go find another channel to watch. There's plenty of content out there. This isn't for you, you know. I don't need you as a Christian telling me that, I'm going to hell because guess what? We're both Christians and you know, God made us the way we are. We love who we are. And if you got an issue with who we are, you need to take it up with God because we didn't create ourselves. Um, so yeah, just a little, you know, just like I said, keep scrolling. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> oh God. But, um, 
All right, y'all. That's enough of that. Let's get on to some of these questions y'all mm -hmm. sent us in. Y'all sent a lot, so we... Like I said, we sat here for an hour answering the questions yesterday with no audio, so bear with us if we look a little weary today. <laughs> we got to do it all over again. Yes. All right. First question that we have. What's our ages? And of course, what's the age difference? Well, I was about to say I'm 35. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm 33. I'm 38. So it's a five year difference. This is yeah. my, uh, this is my sugar daddy right here. Daddy, no sugar. Stop saying that. Why? Because there is sugar. Oh, there's that <laughs> sugar. I'm just saying. But yeah, five years. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a decent distance, right? Or is three the magic number? No, I think five is good. Five is good. I feel like you are older and wiser, but not too old. You're still young enough to keep up. <laughs> well, you know, I feel as though you're no. not so immature and stupid, <laughs> so you're able to keep up as well. So it's good. It's a balance. What? Next question. Ooh. Next question. <laughs> Is marriage in the cards? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'll say this, like, we're definitely working towards marriage, but like one thing that's always been important to me is like, I don't ever want to have it be like, we're getting married for the sake of getting married. Right. Like, I want it to be right. I want it to feel natural. Um, I want it to happen at the right time. Like, I just, you know, it's funny because it reminds me of even, you know, for the first three years that Elliot and I dated, we were not openly gay. People didn't, uh, most people didn't know we were out, dating. Yeah. We weren't out publicly. Mm -hmm. um, and I always said that like, I didn't want to rush him to come out publicly or like announce our relationship publicly because that's not what was important to me. What was important to me is that like, he felt comfortable and secure in our relationship that we shared something special and a bond. And I feel like when you push or rush certain things, it kind of toys with that natural bond, in my opinion. I don't want, you know, I do give, I do joke with him all the time. Like, when you gonna propose to me? When you gonna propose? Cause Joking. I told him a while ago that he was gonna have to be the one to propose because, you know, he had, a lot of things to work through in terms of being open about his sexuality. So I said, you know, if we are gonna get married, I want you to be the one to propose because I wanna make sure that you're ready. Mm -hmm. And I did say that to him, but it wasn't to put pressure on him. It was like, look, like I'm, I love you. I believe in what we have and I know what we have. So it's not like I'm trying to rock the boat in the sense of like putting pressure on him for something that is important, but it's not necessarily gonna change the love that we have for each other. Yeah, I think it was a sense of pressure though when you, you know, you're saying, hey, it's on you. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I do understand the essence of rushing into something. Yeah. And I think it brought me even more, it brought me closer to you because mm -hmm. you understood that point. Like it wasn't as if you needed that to validate our love. Yeah, you know I mean? and I'm not gonna lie, selfishly, it did take the pressure off of me. I was like, you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> And I will. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Elliot, were you nervous meeting Judge Mathis? Ooh, man. Um, I wasn't, I guess, nervous in the sense of anxiety of like meeting somebody that, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your family kind of watched on television and like knew his story and respected him, you know, to the nth degree when it came to it. So it was like that type of thing. Or you seeing somebody for the first time in person, um, where you know you would think that's great, but not only did I meet his dad that day, I met his entire family as well. So I think nervousness and anxiety kind of go hand in hand. The first time I met uh, Judge Mathis, but it was uh, Kamara's baby shower, yeah. and this is before Nora was born. And I Kamara is my sister, by oh, the way, for y'all that don't know. Nor is my niece. Thank you. The whole family was there. <laughs> the whole, the whole like, family. Like, and I mean, like, 50, 
Yeah, at least like five people, or like ten. Cousins, like, aunties, uncles. Detroit like, showed up. Okay, <laughs> met them. You know, Judge was you know welcoming. His mama, uh, Miss Linda, was welcoming. Like they were just like, oh, so good to meet you. Greg told me a lot about you, and it was a perfect way to like actually kick it and talk to them. And then we <laughs> continued to progress into the larger crowd with the whole family, and you know, anxiety kicked in, and I just found myself to the little corner because I was like, oof, I don't, I don't know. We were dating like what six months? Yeah. So that was like six months into our relationship, months, and yeah. I was just like, oof, this is a lot. I'm not, you know, I, my parent or my dad doesn't know about me, like family doesn't know about me, so it was just like a lot all at once, uh, seeing everybody. And you know, kind of meeting the family. But I think overall, people came by. They're like, "Ooh, you dating Greg, right? Like your cousins and stuff." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Pulling you aside into yeah. the corner. But even after that, like they were all welcoming. Like it was almost like I was a part of them, and uh, that kind of overtook the anxiety. And I felt so much more comfortable. And probably the alcohol helped too. But that was a key part. Yeah. The funny part is that I feel like I was just like, I don't know what you're nervous about. Like, if y'all have seen my family, like, they're very open, loving, caring. Like, I was almost more embarrassed for him to be my family, particularly my dad, because y'all know how he can be. Like, just his antics are too much sometimes. And so I was nervous. Like, what is, how is this going to go? I'm always nervous breaking people around my dad because he likes to mess with people. He likes to joke. I'm like, he's going to scare him off before anything happens. He is a joker, though. But yeah, that no, was good. It all worked out, and here we are, six years later, making it almost seven. All right, three, four months. February fourteenth, twenty twenty-three. It'll be seven, seven years. years. Greg, what was your father's reaction when you told him you were gay? Mm. Do you all mind sharing your coming out stories? Yeah. Um, so the funny thing is, um, I did not necessarily like come out to my dad or um, tell him. He, I was a freshman in college and I was secretly dating a guy, or at least I thought I was secretly dating him and wasn't as secretive as I thought because somebody ended up calling my younger brother, Amir, and I guess telling him that I was in this relationship. And so I get a call from my brother when I'm up at college and he goes, um, Greg, I got a call from a mutual friend of ours. He named the friend and he goes, um, and he says you're up in Mich you, you, you know, you're up in Michigan dating a guy. And you know, when you get that feeling of like, I just come, my whole body just went into like that nervous, like, it's like that fight or flight feeling where like your stomach gets in a knot and you know, my body got hot, <laughs> my, my heart started beating fast. <laughs> and I just was like, I said, no, that's not true. I told him it wasn't true and I hung up the phone. And then I sat there, I thought, and I was like, he knows obviously, like I sat there and really thought about what to do and I ended up calling him back and I was like, Amir, um, it is true, but please don't say anything because I want to be able to tell people on my own terms. I want to be able to, you know, have those conversations myself. He says, okay, hangs up the phone. Literally, it couldn't have been like more than five minutes and my dad calls me and I pick up the phone and he's just crying on the other end. Mm -hmm. And before I can even say anything, he's just like, I love you, son. I love you. Like, we all love you. I don't want you to ever feel like you got to hide anything from us. I don't ever want you to feel, um, you know, like you have to hide from anybody. And it was funny because, like, that was his main concern. Is like he was just so worried that I felt like I had to hide who I was from him, from the family, and from everybody, really. And so it feel good to have that response because I know a lot of families do not, a lot of, gay people do not have that response from their family so like i mean it really feel good to hear that and i'm not gonna lie like i was still uncomfortable with it 
Like I didn't want to talk about it with them. I did not want to, you know, it's just when you get used to hiding something like that for your entire life, you get, you know, it's so, it's still uncomfortable routine. a little bit. Yeah, it's routine. Mm -hmm. And it was still uncomfortable for me to open up to them. It took me years to like fully be comfortable, like talking about my relationships, talking about, you know, what's going on in my life and introducing them to my gay friends. It was, you know, it was a work in progress for me to get comfortable still. So, um, but, you know, I was fortunate, like I said, to have a family that was super supportive and loved me no matter what. And they still do. What? That was in, I mean, yeah, I can't imagine that intensity, especially when <laughs> you're like, what? How do you know? Yeah. Who told you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Those years. Oh, yes. Um, it wasn't too long ago for mine, but like, I guess sharing my coming out story is still, well, was still like in motion. I'm learning how to choose the right audio oh. apps for you. Which one do you want to use to listen to this? Oh. What well, wasn't she? What was happening? I'll tell you, those things got a mind today, y'all. I almost jumped up and ran off this couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, oh, I lost train of thought. So, yeah, when I, I told my dad uh, initially as far as in, um, me and Greg dating. I remember we were at a party mm -hmm. uh, and it was like a hard, it was just a hard year. I just remember that just being intense and I felt more isolated, more alone. Like I just didn't, like Greg and I wasn't like on one, on like one, I guess on the same level, especially during that time. And I just didn't feel as though I was being true to myself. Uh, so I called my dad, uh, Greg was sitting beside me outside, and I told him that I was dating a guy. And I've been dating a guy for the last three years. Um, when I told him, he was, he paused, uh, you know, you can hear the breath on the phone. And he was like, son, I love you. I am so happy that you told me this. Like he said, I noticed that you have been very distant, you know, from me and I couldn't figure out what was going on, whether it was something I did or something that, you know, was more personal that you didn't want to talk about, which obviously it was. And he said, no, I'm not going to say that I am falling into, you know, your lifestyle, but he says, I'm glad you're open enough to show me it so that I can understand it. So in my, I guess, coming out was actually like an invitation that he accepted to be even closer to me. And to this day, we are closer. Like, I talk about a whole bunch more things than what I would have even imagined to talk to my dad about. Um, and that was like a big catalyst for me to talk to like friends and other family that I saw more on an immediate basis that I was isolating as well. I felt like I was creating these compartments and walls that had me by my, well, feeling as though I was by myself. When in essence, I just needed to relax and communicate and when I did that you know friends family they all were receptive they you know wanted them they wanted me to know that they were there for me regardless and you know it doesn't work like that all the time and not everybody is happy and not everybody's going to go as you want it to happen and on the pace that you want it to happen but the the fact that I was able to lift that burden or that wall away from me was the bigger part that I felt like Greg and I, um, Pearl Greg and I helped our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I definitely agree with that because I even noticed a shift in just like, it allowed us to be more open and intimate with each other mm -hmm. and really let down our guard in a way that I think was a lot more difficult when you are using so much of your brain power to lie and hide who you are and kind of tiptoe around families and friends that you don't want to know what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. So, um, yeah, man, that was, that was difficult. <laughs> we made it through. We did. So we've mentioned couples therapy. So whose idea was it and what was our experience? Mm -hmm. So it was my idea. Um, I think it came kind of right after I told my dad. Um, and our experience of it was, I, well, my personal experience and how it helped us was, it was, we could probably go into a whole nother part about how we got mm -hmm. there, but 
honestly, it was that we weren't communicating well to each other. Like I would, I would leave the cabinets open or something like that, and Greg would lose it. And you know, he would say, "That's why you just want to leave me, isn't it?" And I was just like, "Whoa!" And then you know, it would start just getting into combative, like you know, talking to each other where we really weren't communicating. Mm -hmm. We were just kind of two ships in the night time. Literally, thing. like. It was just like this, like I could not say a word to him about anything without it turning into argument. You mm -hmm. know, if there was something on, like if I even said, hey, do you mind doing this? Like it was like explosive because there was so much tension in our relationship and we weren't communicating. Like we weren't able to communicate. Like, I mean, I remember there were some dark days where like, I didn't think we were gonna make it. I didn't think that we were gonna make it. Like you were hanging out like crazy, like, you know, and I was getting upset about that and flying off the handle and wondering where you were and what was going on. And I think that it really, what a couple's therapy helped us see is take a step back and realize that we were really just having communication issues. We were talking past each other and we were so caught up in our own feelings of how we had been hurt by the other person that we weren't even able to hear and listen to how we were causing hurt or how I was causing hurt to him. Right. I'm so focused on how he's hurting me and that's causing me so much frustration that I can't even effectively communicate or even hear how I'm hurting him. And so it allowed us to take a step back and really get on the same page about what our needs were and like you said, I mean, I think this conversation could be a whole another video in and of itself about our experience in couples therapy. Right. But um, but it is good and healthy. I mm -hmm. think it is a value to do, even if you because it not only does it explore your personal relationship with the other person, it helps you kind of look at get a mirror of yourself from a third party. Mm -hmm. where you know it's not where you have preconceived notions of your partner that you're like oh you're just saying that because of this you know what I mean so it's really what you communicate and how much you put into therapy and how much they will put out so that you can understand how to make your relationship better because mm -hmm. I will say therapy 100% mm -hmm. saved our relationship and I'm so grateful for it I, mm -hmm. I feel like at some point it would be nice if we could actually get our couple's therapist to come on and maybe do a video mm -hmm. with us I wonder if he would do that that would be good he probably charge us though. Maybe, maybe we could save some other relationships out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are we liking California? I'm gonna let you answer first since I feel like I was the one that pushed us to move out here in the first place. What are you doing? Crip walking. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I've grown to like it. Uh, it wasn't like a fall in love instantly type of thing. But I really enjoy being able to have a balance in my life where I felt like I was constantly on the go before. Um, being out here in LA has exposed clearer boundaries for me so that I can focus on things that make me happy and make us happier. Um, so I like it, you know, we get hiking, got some good food, people, we're eating our, you know, we're developing our village in our own sense. Um, and then, I don't know, the weather is just like, oh, perfect, <laughs> especially in this time of year. But, uh, but yeah, I'm liking it. You? I'm loving it. I mean, I always feel like if I could just get him out here <laughs> to LA, to California, that he would fall in love with it. And that was hard, because I mean, it was easy for me because my family's out here, I've lived out here in the past, I kind of know what to expect, so I knew I was gonna love it being out here. Um, it definitely has its drawbacks, like LA can be a little isolating just because it's so hard to get around and we don't have as, um, you know, we built a, a great support system and friend group in DC, so we are definitely in the process of like rebuilding all of that here on the West Coast. And like, that's one thing that I worry about the most is just making sure, cause I know my family's here, Elliot's family is not, but making sure that we both have like that support system and network that we need and want. And so that's something I still worry about slightly, but um, I knew that generally he would love it. Now we just gotta, you know, we gotta settle in and adjust and kind of rebuild those important connections 
so that it's not just, you know, me hanging out with my family and Elliot having to rely on them completely as a support system, but having kind of a friends and community of our own. Any children to enjoy this Cali weather? Two. <laughs> I would two. Yes. I think children are definitely something that we've talked about and mm -hmm. want to to do. I think with the moving and everything else that we're doing, like and you know, like what comes first type of thing. Yeah, I think we definitely want kids, but you know, relocating has kind of you know, first we want to settle into LA, kind of figure out where we fall in there and kind of what's going on in our life before we're like, okay, let's make this new life decision. But I say we probably, um, you know, you might hear about some kids in the next year or two. You see. <laughs> Uh, Elliot, you mentioned you were surprised by how down-to-earth Greg was. Did you have preconceived notions of how he would be? Thank you. What did you think I was going to be? Oh, Thank you for asking that question. Um, hmm. No, I did not have a preconceived notion <laughs> of Greg. You know, like I said, we had a mutual best friend of ours, so I, I didn't think he was going to be that stuck up or that unrelatable. But, but you did think I was going to be stuck up. What do you mean? You thought I, you just said you didn't think I was going to be that stuck up, which means you thought I was going to be stuck up. Uh, I mean, yeah, I said that. But you know what the funny part is, y'all? Is... Elliot is like y'all might think I'm the Elliot is the bougie one. <sighs> what? When I met you. All, he will only take Uber black cars, y'all. And I had, I was like, Ellie, why are you taking Uber black cars everywhere? We, we can get an Uber X, it's a lot cheaper. Like, I feel like I'm always the, like, I'm, ooh, okay. I'm a down to earth one. But continue, continue. I'm so sorry. The guy, the so there's the guy that he, if he needs sushi, he's like, oh, we must go to Nobu. I can't, I can't go anywhere with Nobu. Oh, I'm bougie okay. when it comes to food, I will admit that. Yes. I'm bougie when it comes to food. Oh, so you are gonna go to the premiere at Uber X? You bougie when it comes to hotels, flights. You bougie when it comes to pretty much anything else. What does that mean? Anything else? I like to be comfortable. Like, you know, you wanna have some space. You wanna stay in a hotel. You want it to not have mold in it. You know? <laughs> Something just I don't need it to be fancy. It doesn't like I need like look I don't look, need like beds. There's a big like, spectrum between service. mode hotel and bougie hotel. Well, I am not you there. Can... <laughs> <laughs> right where your knee is. Okay. Um, Let me put my thighs away. <laughs> yeah, before we get in before we, we get in trouble you again. Hands up on that table. I said, oh, okay now. I've already um, heard enough from y'all about these thoughts. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing else. Uh, no, so, yes. No, I didn't have a preconceived notion. I, you know, I thought he might have been a little bougie, maybe, but not where I couldn't uh, hang out. But he was, like, super, he was way more relatable and down to earth than I thought. Like, even hanging out, like, fast forwarding, we never got that answer. Who made the first move, which I need those numbers. We need to add those numbers up. What did I do with this question? Because I'm trying to say, when we hung out that night, like it made me think that you were more relatable and down to earth. And by the way, pe more people definitely said that you made the first move. I saw some point fives in there that you made the first move too. We can count it up and we can see. Okay. We can count it up, count the comments, because a lot of people didn't answer. I was surprised when people answered that question. Mm -hmm. And I just remember seeing Elliot, 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 Greg, Elliot, Elliot, Greg. Either way, let's finish this question because I, I want the facts. Um, the like we had, the, I was, I felt like when I was talking about like my life and things I've experienced that he wasn't, he didn't have a preconceived notion about me. Like he was talking to me in the senses of his experience and not like trying to put up a wall or be inauthentic and whatever the word is in that in that way. And when I felt like he was being real with me and showing that sense of compassion, I think, is what kind of drew me a lot closer. Or at least got, you know, put that whole preconceived notion thing away. <laughs> what? Did that answer the question? It did. Know. I think so. I felt like Let him know if it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what are our zodiac signs? Is Elliot a fire sign? A Sagittarius? What? So he is not a Sagittarius, but whoever said that is close because he is a fire sign. I am an Aries. Aries. Yes. And remember we talked about those Who's rough there? those rough years that we had? Fire. <sighs> he was breathing fire. <laughs> oh, and you're this little angel? I am. I'm oh, an, Lord. I'm an Aquarius. Lord. We're known for being sweet, kind, and generous. What's happening? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. Like I said, we know we're being sweet, kind, caring, loving, <laughs> trustworthy, loyal. That's true. All the good things. You don't want to say it all, huh? Okay. But Aries, Aquarius. Um, you know what your sign is? What's your element? I found out yesterday when we originally shot this video. See, I'm glad that we able that we did do the test run, the, the failed test run yesterday because now I feel like I'm more prepared for all these questions. Mm. Um, yesterday, I did not know whether I was an air sign or a water sign, but I'm an air sign. You had to ask Siri. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else would I want to say? Yeah. Mm. What's about Zodiac? Oh, oh compatibility. I know y'all going to... So, all right. I feel like we are compatible, mm. but I know there's people out there that know all about this zodiac stuff so i wonder what they're gonna say about our compatibility or not i know people get real into that yeah you do i'm into it because like every time i've read about aries like his zodiac like every time i read about it it's spot on for him it's pretty close for yours too good most of the time. all the good things at least <laughs> you don't want to talk about the other side <laughs> all right so, oh, Elliot is from the, the same place as Charlemagne the God. Yes, from Mount's Corner, South Carolina. Charlemagne, Lenard. Shout out to Charlemagne. Kit Field. Dropping a clues bomb for Charlemagne. Ooh, that's another thing you didn't know yesterday. <laughs> what did you think it was yesterday? So, I'm so glad, like I said, we got to do a, te a failed test run yesterday. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I thought all these years of listening to The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God that he had been saying dropping a cruise bomb. You know, like a cruise missile? I thought he said dropping a cruise bomb. And Elliot informed me that he had been saying dropping a clues bomb. So. And who is, who, who's Clue reference? I know who DJ Clue is. There you I go. Just, you know. Good job. Attention. <laughs> But yes, uh, I think I I met Charlemagne when I went to vacation with y'all the first time. Yeah, did y'all know each other when you grew up? Mm -mm. Um, I knew like some of his cousins. Okay. Like uh, I know a lot of his cousins. That we went to the same high school, uh, to Berkeley High. Shout out to Berkeley High. Uh, so the first time you met him was in Anguilla then, right? Like met him, met him. I think I've seen him at Berkeley High before. Yeah. Uh, but... I yeah met him in person, like officially was in like Anguilla, and um, and I think uh, I think I actually yeah we went to Anguilla for New Year for Christmas and New Year's maybe like four or five years ago we went as a whole family yeah the ago. whole family went yeah. and Charlemagne was there with his crew and I guess one of your friends from high school yep. yeah mm -hmm. that's his cousin. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Charlemagne's cousin. Shout Shout out. A cruise bomb for Charlemagne. A clues bomb. Clue. Clues clue, bomb clue, for Charlemagne's clue. cousin. Yes. But um oh, and that was cool too, because he actually um Charlemagne gave Elliot a shout out on the oh, Breakfast yeah. Club when he was talking about uh, our reality TV show, Mathis Family Matters. Yeah. So that was is your rumor report. And I and I don't I don't know uh Elliot Cooper, but uh he is from Monk's Corner, so salute to you, Elliot. Dropping the clues bombs for Elliot Cooper. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never lied. That was cool. I was excited. People were texting me when I woke up. I was like, what happened? <laughs> you know, you get a text in the morning, you're like, well, shit, is it good or is it bad? Oh, but God. it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of one time before I came out of the closet, 
I went to a baseball game with one of my best friends, um, EJ Johnson, who's Magic Johnson's son. Mm -hmm. And apparently somebody took our picture at this baseball game. And I went home, not thinking nothing about it. I wake up the next day to all these text messages and phone calls. And some blog had took this picture of EJ and I, who we've never dated, we're good friends, but never dated. Like it, yeah. And they were like, EJ Johnson at the Dodgers game with his new boyfriend. And this was before I was out, so I got all these text messages and phone calls. Like, I was just like, oh my goodness. It was, it was another one of those moments where my stomach got tight and like my heart started beating fast. And I was like, oh man, what is happening? Yes. So that was fun. Um, how long after our first date did we move in together? So it was definitely over a year. It was definitely yeah, definitely over a year. It, and it was interesting how it happened too, because um, we had been dating for about a year, mm -hmm. and <laughs> we would go, we would transit back and forth yeah. to each other because we lived like a mile apart, maybe. We and lived about a mile apart in DC and if you know DC well we lived kind of on the 8th street corridor yeah, 8th so street. I was on one end 14th street and he was on the other end like 2nd street so about 12 13 blocks or so mm -hmm. and there was a little street car that ran up and down the street yep. and so I would pack my little bags and <laughs> hop on the street car yeah. and go down to his place yep. and then or I would go yeah or vice versa yep. <laughs> and we did that for a little bit yeah and then secretly secretly nobody could see i remember us. somebody caught me outside of your place one time they're like what are you doing out here i was like oh, i'm just um i just went to 7-eleven <laughs> <laughs> oh. and then so um we did that and uh about a year into us dating look this was god actually i bet because my condo flooded like mm. i was staying in a I was staying in a condo at the time in DC and what did it have? It was five floors, I think. I lived on the fourth floor of the building and I'm at work one day. I get this phone call from my building and they're like, Greg, you gotta come home right now. Your con something in your condo is flooding and it's flooding all the four units below you. So like, I, you know, literally I get back to the building and my place is destroyed like water everywhere the floor is all wet all the units below me like i got lucky because my floor was only messed up but all of the units bef below me the walls like the, their ceilings like all their electronics and stuff completely destroyed because of this flood in my unit and it turns out that they were doing maintenance on the building on each unit they were replacing a part on our pipes in each unit and the plumbing company that was doing this work forgot to put the piece back on tight enough in my unit. So when they turned the water back on for the building, it popped off and flooded the entire unit. So, I mean, it was a horrible situation. I will, you know, but it, you know, was silver line. Like the insurance companies, thank God, took care of everything. But I had to, I couldn't live in my unit for three months. So I ended up staying with Elliot for three straight months. Mm -hmm. And um, until they like fixed everything, got everything back in order, and honestly, by the time but after three months, it was ready to move back. He was like, <laughs> I just can't live without you. I just need to. We need to move in together. Yes. Yeah, so after that little stretch of time, <laughs> we ended up. I mean, really though, after that stretch of time, we ended up looking moving it. Yeah, yeah, we ended up looking for a place, place. together. Yeah. I sold my condo, yes. and we ended up buying our place together. So we bought our first property in DC, which we still have now, mm -hmm. about a year and a half or maybe two years into our relationship, yeah. which you know, might be a little quick to buy property together. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, worst case scenario, you can sell a property, right? Correct. Yeah. We knew. We knew. We had faith. We had faith. Um, yeah. Uh, can we talk about our relationship with each other's families? You want to go first? Yeah. Um, my, I mean, now my relationship with this family is amazing. Like, I love them. They literally embody, like, everything you would think about Southern hospitality. Like, when I go down there, they, like, won't let, and I stay at their, you know, I stay at 
Elliot's father and stepmom's house and they won't let me cook, they won't let me clean, they feed me. The only thing I had to do when I was down there was cut the grass. It's gonna work. Elliot's dead, you know, they have about three acres that they live on, so it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's, you know, the three acres is the grass you had to cut. Yeah. You live on. So I just told Greg, like when I was younger, my dad used to wake us up at 6 a.m. to go cut grass, like, and do the whole lawn on a Saturday. And so Greg, I, I said, I told Greg, I was like, you're not gonna be able to cut grass. And my dad was like, yeah, let him try. And so Greg got on his lawnmower. He was having, you were having too much fun. Mm -hmm. Like, too much fun. But. I was going a little too fast. On purpose, though. I mean, you give me, the little lawnmower I was on was when you sit on, like a little go-kart type thing, and you use the levers to turn around. I was doing 360s and yes. stuff. Yes. So Elliot kicked me off. He had to go. <laughs> that one. He about to mess up the whole front. And line. he made me use the push mo. Exactly. That's, that's what my dad used to do, I too. was good at that, too, though. I, yeah. I, cut, I cut three whole acres with a push mow, y'all. You did not cut the whole three acres with no push mow. <laughs> quit lying these people. <laughs> But he was messing up the line. Everybody know when you <laughs> cut grass, them lines need to be straight in the front line, in the front yard. Like you cannot have no wavy lines in your front yard. You don't want to mess up your your tape up, right? It's what? just like a tape up. You know when you you don't want your tape up to be crooked. You know what I'm saying? No, that makes sense. Yeah. You want the lines to be straight. I can even repair my head to a long. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the question. Okay. Um, I mean, the relationship now is amazing. Like, I yes. love his family, we love each other, but it wasn't always that way because for the three years of us dating, you know, and it's no fault to them, for the three years of us first dating, like, Elliot wasn't out, I wasn't really out, and so we, you know, his family did not know that we were dating, so I didn't really have a relationship with them until more recently. And um, it was funny because when we were dating, before they knew that we were, you know, dating and that Elliot was dating men, he took me down there to meet his dad, and I just was a friend that happened to be in town. And even then, his dad didn't know we were dating, but we all hung out, and it was cool. So, like, I love the relationship. It's been, um, it's he took him all over the place, too. He's like, let's go here, let's go here. <laughs> he did take me all over Charleston. I was like, and, he paid, and again, he paid for everything, wouldn't let me pay for a thing. Um, my relationship with Greg's family is, is really great. Uh, now, coming here, even being around them as much as I have, like, if you don't know Greg's family, you can go there for dinner, brunch, whatever. All of them talk. All of them got this high energy where, you know, one of them will be talking to the other person, the other person will be loud having a whole nother conversation, but somehow they could switch positions and still have the same, still be just as loud, still have just as much conversation about the same thing. But the part I love is that they like adore each other. Like it's like they're so high energy because they're into each other as far as in what's going on, caring about what you know what's happening with them. And I felt like that kind of poured over uh, to me. Like and I appreciated that. And they treat me as if I'm like a brother or a son in the same in the same facet. Uh, I will say, being around them those first two or three years and seeing how they treated Greg, you know, their gay son or, you know, gay brother, like, and even the family treated him, gave me, like, an inspiration to tell my dad and be more comfortable. I was like, at first, I'll be honest, I was envious. I was like, how, they're so close to him, they're talking to him, like, man, I'm, I'm jealous. Like, how can I make that happen? And it was through communicating it. And I think by doing that, and putting that wall down and you know seeing how your family kind of treated you kind of inspired me to to do that at least with mine or at least try to um so i owe a lot to his family just in that regard and you know they love my my cooking every now and then uh whip up some <laughs> shrimp and grits or whatever but uh but no i, I enjoy it and even being here in la it's like it's even good to feel them and have them here mm -hmm. yeah I ain't had to cut no grass though. That's the other thing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what else y'all got for us? What else they got? All right, what else we got? Mm, in terms of attraction, what brought us together? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Well, I'm gonna just keep it real with you. I mean, the first night that we spent together, it was probably a little bit of a liquor. <laughs> no, but in seriousness, like even that night, like we sat up there and talked for hours in my place just alone. Like, and it was just so natural. And what attracted me to him and what made it feel so comfortable for me was that, I mean, obviously he's attractive, but like beyond that, like he was funny, smart, and like, you know, you can just tell somebody is kind from meeting them. Like it was just those three characteristics. Like that's the key to my heart. Like if you can keep me laughing, if you can actually stimulate me mentally by having conversations. You secrets. Like. <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> I mean, that's what did it for me. And I think um, it just really felt natural. Like, we never had to force anything. It just flowed. Yeah. And I felt so comfortable, so secure. And at the same time, um, somebody that, you know, motivates me just by looking at him, but also, like, just inspires me to be a better version of myself is something that was there from the beginning, which I always, uh, you know, definitely caught my eye and has kept here ever since. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta say some nice stuff about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you set that up. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, like my attraction, uh, what brought, I guess, to Greg was, I mean, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier, but like his compassion, right? Like it, in my life, I've had a lot of churn, you know, in feeling as though uh, being cared about or being validated in some senses. And it's not to say that he validated me in, in that way, but I felt that he cared or was compassionate enough when I told him, you know, everything that's going on in my life or everything that I've dealt with. Um, I think I, I even told you like my mom passed, like when we first started talking, like it was just, I felt that comfortable and, uh, and then when I saw and I sensed that compassion that he had that related to it, it just drew me in a lot closer um, beyond the physical attraction that I already had. But it was just one of those things where I knew that if he could relate in a caring and compassionate sense, because I am a loving and caring person, I, I feel as though that drew me or that was the one thing that really drew me to you. Now, on top of that, you know, he was smart, he was witty, he was a smart ass sometimes as well. <laughs> Still a smart ass. Still a smart ass, so that's very <laughs> true. Um, and then he, you know, he could cook. No, or not. That's a good one. Although you did not like the first meal I cooked for you. I didn't say I didn't like it. It just wasn't what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, um, yeah. Yeah. That's the attraction. Jewels together. Or brothels together. Gotta make sure I speak up so the mic can work. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a question. Oh, was that it? That was it. If there's anything else you want to know, you just gotta ask again. Ask. You know, I think we can make a little series out of this. So if you do have more questions, comments, if you have suggestions on stuff you want to see on the channel, mm -hmm. let us know. Like we said, I mean, we, we want this to be fun. We right. want it to be positive, uplifting, but also interactive for everybody. So sure. let sure. us know what you think. Continue to comment. And, you know, we'll be back with something soon. Thanks again for watching us. Thanks again for supporting us. And we will... Next, catch you on the next series. I don't know if it's going to be a part three. It might be another trip. Yeah, we're going on a trip somewhere soon. I'm not going to tell you where. You got to stay tuned to find out. But And we're going to make it there on time. <laughs> yes. We're not, going, yeah. we're not going to miss the flight this time. Yes. But it's another international trip, and we're, I'm super excited about it. Um, the only part that I'm a little disappointed about is that you are coming a day later than me because you gotta work. So I'll be there by myself for a day. He yeah, acting like you don't like that. I don't. Spe I don't. Oh. You know, I don't know. Especially because it's a tropical vacation. So I don't like being on the beach by myself for about you guys. Stay tuned, y'all. Thank you again for supporting us. Yeah. And 
we will see you soon.